HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome, welcome to Hopkins in High School, Field 2, for today's battle between the Dedham Marauders and the Hopkinton Hillers. Dedham's batting lineup is 15, Billy Casey, number 1, Sean Noski, number 20, Griffin O'Connor, number 24, Eric Leonard, number 21, James Devonick, number 16, Scott Noski. Number 11, Jack Roslanik. Number 17, Cullen Pitratonio. And number 6, Jared Duane. Head coach is Don Savvy, assisted by Tim Lenane and Brian McCabe. Be underway for first pitch in just a second. We'll give you the Hopkins in defense after first pitch. Nice sunny day today. Temperature at game time is 67. It's a bit windy, high sky. So the Dedham manager has already alerted his players to talk to each other. Watch out for fly balls. Here's a curveball by Cole Glassburn. Around the infields, Ryan Kester at third base. Shorts up Ben McKenzie. Second base, Paharik. First base, Brendan Kelly. Ball low. Oh, strike, strike two. He got that pitch. Left field, Drew Rancatori. Tommy Ambrosoni in center. And Connor Kelly in right. Ronnie Sheamus behind the plate, catching Cole Glassburn. Curve ball. Cole told me yesterday, right prior to a washout against Medfield, that he's going to throw fastball, curveball, a cutter, which ought to be interesting. And he says he's going to uh, throw his change up. And he quick he quick pitches the hitter, swings and miss. Drop baseball, so it's a strikeout. And the runner, Casey, makes it to first base safely. I'm going to have to give Cole a wild pitch on that one. That's pretty impossible. The runner on first, Brendan Kelly holding Casey on. Sean Noski. We're gonna have a little delayed calls here. You can see the umpire waits a second before he's gonna give you the strike ball call. So we're gonna have the Boston Herald down here. And there's a fly ball in the left field. That's gonna drop down. Rancatori picks it up, holds Casey at second base. Two on, no out. Cole's been getting hit hard lately. Earlier in the year, he was pretty untouchable. Well, the last few telecasts, he's been getting the ball squared up on him. Griffin O'Connor, number three hitter. Stepping in against Glassburn. The breaking pitch upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Oh, Dedham's 12 and three overall. 10 and two in the Tri-Valley Conference. So ball low, two and oh. We don't have benefit of the scoreboard and we don't have benefit of uh, a clicker for me, so I may lose the count every now and then. Cole Glassburn dropped down to the side. I was able to get that fastball over for a strike. Two balls and a strike.
Counts three and one. He went down, dropped, dropped down the side again. Foul back. Full count now. To O'Connor. Umpire wants more balls. It's nice to have Sandra and Lou Merloni make their first appearance this year. They've been a staple at Hopkinton athletic events for, oh God knows, probably 15 years. This is their first appearance. They spend some time down on Cape Cod. Umpire signals for play. Glassburn takes the sign from Seamus. Runners are going. Free pass. Free pass on a curveball. Not so sure about that call. Cole's best pitch is his fastball, but he was given the curveball from uh, Coach Simos. It is a big boy, Eric Leonard. Eric with a K. Nice stop by Seamus. He's really working in the first inning. No outs. Bases juiced. Maybe Eric is uh, Norwegian descent. There's a strike on the outside corner. Cole's got a lot of life on his fastball, but he gets killed when he leaves it over the heart of the plate. He's got to work the corners. Uh, that was the corner, but outside. Counts two and one. I like this umpire. He calls out the count. Maybe I won't get lost today. There's a line drive into the right field. One run is in. Here comes the second run. Ball cut off by Brendan Kelly. Two runs score. Two RBIs for Leonard. That plate's Casey and Noski. That ball had some sizzle on it. Slice job. James Devonick stepping in. Coach Simos is going to go with one pitcher per inning because he's got four games in five days as a strike. They have the Pedroli tournament starting Thursday. Oh, nice curveball. Devonick was way out in front of that one. Breezy day here. It's coming and going. Comes right back with a curveball that wasn't even close. So Cole's up in the county. He can throw pretty much anything he wants. Ball low. Two and two. Get a good crowd. There's a ground ball, the shortstop. Picked up and thrown to Pavarnik, second base, or Paharik at second base. Field is choice. For Devonik. Ball was fairly slow hit, so that was really Ben's only play was to go to second on it. Now he's talking to Paharik over there, who's up from JV. He's going to be a really good ball player, I'm told. Got to keep an eye on my papers. Scott Noski fouls that one over to the right side. That's out of play. Scott Noski's the catcher today for Dedham. Catching his brother. An interesting lineup defensively. I'll get to it. There's a steal at second base. No throw. One on runners on second and third. One out. First base open.
ground ball foul. Oh, he went wailing for that pitch. He needed to be 10 feet tall. Oh, well, there's two out. Those pitches up around the, around the eyes are really tough to lay off. Jack Roslanek is going to try and play the couple with a base hit. He was overmatched on that pitch. A lot of life on that fastball. Very late swing. Simos, Coach Simos relaying the signs into Seamus. Seamus held that ball for an extra second. Give the umpire a little, little time to think about it. This home plate umpire is very decisive. Ball was inside. Nice break and pitch by Glassburn. I'll have to say some more nice things about Cole later on. Ball outside. Two balls, two strikes. Cole Glassburn will quick pitch. And that sometimes stuns the hitter. Not on this pitch though. There's a fly ball in the right field. Connor Kelly camps under it, makes the grab, retires the side. After one half inning, the score is Dedham 2, Hopkinton coming up. All right, let's take a look at Dedham's defense. Griffin O'Connor at third, Jared Duane at short. Excuse me, Griffin O'Connor at third, Billy Casey at short, Cullen Hick Petrotino, Petronato, at second base, I had to put in that hick there, I was told by the coach. Eric Leonard at first base. The J crew, unlike the Killer Bees, the J crew, Jared Dwayne, Jack Roslanik, and James Devonick in the outfield. Scott Noski behind the plate today, catching Sean Noski. Based on warm-ups, looks like he's... He's got a little bit of life on his fastball. Leading off for Hopkinton will be Ben McKenzie, followed by Stevie Simos, Tommy Ambrosoni. Oh, I didn't butcher it today. Drew Rancatori, Connor Kelly, Ronnie Sheamus, Brendan Kelly, Cole Gla uh, Ryan Kester and Cole Glassburn bringing up the rear. Ben McKenzie hitting 444 on the year. As I mentioned on all the telecasts, he'll be headed up to Bowdoin College in Maine. They have the number one dining program, according to my research. His father said he'll put on 20 pounds. He'll be 5'11", 183 going up there, and he'll be 203 when he comes home. Is a strike. Nice mustard by Noski. Curveball down low. So he'll be joining Stevie Sinos up at Bowden. And every Friday night they have a lobster casserole, corn on the cob. There's a ball upstairs and a blueberry pastry. Maine's known for its blueberries. So that's where gonna, they're gonna put on their weight. Is foul straight back. Only 2,800 students at Bowdoin. It's a ground ball to third base. Thrown over across, and it's not picked up by the first baseman, Leonard. And we're going to have to give the uh, 
third baseman an error for dirt in that one. E3, Stevie Simos hitting 515 on the year. Ben McKenzie has got seven swipes. Stevie Simons has only been hit three times this year compared to the 14 last year. There's a ground ball between first and second. McKenzie turning the bag and he holds at second base. Nice piece of hitting by Stevie Simos. Oh, right off the bat, Noski finds himself in a little bit of trouble. Coach Savvy told me before the game he knows the Hillers can hit. Tommy shows a little bit of bunt. Corner infielder's charge, as the first baseman did. Third baseman had to stay home. Tommy will bunt at any time. Right there, he lays down a beauty. That's going to be out at first, but that was a beautiful bunt, hugging the chalk line. Nice play by Noski behind the plate to pick that ball up. That's a sacrifice. For Tommy Ambersoni, really good bunt. Drew Rancatori, clean up, 395 on the season. Here's a curveball. Let that one go. It was a little bit high. Outfielders playing him straight up. There's a fly ball, deep right field. There goes the right field, and it is gone. A three-run bomb by Drew Rancatori. James Devonick went back to the fence, looked up, and it was gone. So that two-run lead by Dedham has been erased by a big fly. Well, any chirping in the Dedham dugout has been silenced on that bomb. That's at least 3.30 to the fence out there in right field. Connor Kelly, very impressive first year player. He's going to take a look at a curveball for a ball. Noski's tried several curveballs so far and hasn't got one called for a strike. It is a foul ball. Heading over to some fans. They have no intention of getting that ball. Counts one and one. Wow, the umpire took a long look at that one. Looked like a strike to me. But I'm a homer. That was that was way low. Counts two and one on Kelly. There's a strike. Connor Kelly looked that ball all the way in. Deuces for Kelly. Base is empty after that Rankatory home run. And Connor Kelly gets rung up. He gets caught looking. Oh, there's two out. Ronnie Sheamus, the catcher. Up to the dish. He's hitting 458 on the year for a sophomore. Here's a curveball. Just first, he's got a strike call on. Nice to see Brett McIntyre all the way back from France down to go watch his sister play softball. And there's a curveball. Back to back. Starting to get his feel for it now. Everybody at the high school level can hit fastballs. It's the curveballs they have trouble with. He snapped off another breaking pitch, but that hit Seamus on the arm. Got a little greedy. Threw three in a row. 
Brendan Kelly, the big monster, coming up to the plate. Right fielder is almost over the fence out there. I don't think the right fielder can get much deeper. And there's a fly ball down the left field line. And the wind plays with it. But Brendan's out. I was going to say the left fielder made a nice play on it, but it was just kind of routine. All right, we'll head to the uh, top of the second inning. Head to the top of the second inning. We got a pitching change for Hopkinton. Nate Bertucci Bissonette. It is hyphenated. First time I've seen him. So HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. You can find them online at mybillspizza.com. Cullen Hick, or the Hick, Petrantonio. Coach spent several minutes with me. I had to say the word Hick. He's facing Bissonette. That's a line drive up the middle in the center field. The Hick gets on first base. Jared Dwayne, who made a play on Rankatory to end the last half of the inning, steps in. Ronnie Sheamus got pretty good arm behind the plate. We'll see what Dedham does. Their leadoff man. They're going to put the run game on. Maybe they'll see what uh, Bissonette has for a pickoff move. Nice fastball. Inside corner for a called strike. Not a very greedy lead over there for the Hick. Curveball way up high. Count is even, one and one. Outfield playing pretty straight up for Dwayne. And there's a curveball in there for a strike. It's a nice one. I'd even go so far as to call that a bender. Counts one to two. There's a ground ball. That's in the center field for a base hit by Dwayne. So the Hillers find themselves in trouble again. Two men on, no out. Leadoff hitter, hitter Billy Casey. Going to step in as soon as Bissonette and Seamus finish their conversation on the mound. Ryan Kester playing in a little bit at third base. Ooh, we're really getting a big crowd down here. There's a pitch high. Tried to overthrow that one a bit. As I mentioned before, or maybe I didn't, the Boston Herald is going to come down here to watch the game. And there's a ball in there for a strike. Up, oh, Jill Maloney has introduced herself for the first time this year. Luke DeLoya, last year's left fielder, is in the dugout. Come down for a visit. He'll be heading to Colby College, play some football. There's a foul ball lashed down the left field line. Casey way in front of that one. Finds himself behind in the count. Kester's playing way back at third. There's a curveball. Ah, that ball had a lot of blood on it. Now the bases are juiced. A lot of blood on that ball. That was about a 45-foot base hit. I thought it hit him in the batter's box, but the ump was closer to the plate than I was. And now Bertucci Bissonette has to work himself out of a big jam. 
with his opposite number, Sean Noski. Stepping in. Curveball down low. Got to say this umpire has been very consistent. Not much to, uh, no, it's, can't say that word, complain about. The pitch, ball's a strike, one and one. Mr. Knight looks good. He's pretty composed out there. He got a crap hit by Casey. There's a pop up. It should be infield fly. That's an infield fly. Runner is automatically out. Uh, it was an easy call for the umpires that did require ordinary effort, which is one of the prerequisites for an infield fly. So with one out and the bases loaded, Griffin O'Connor at the plate. Curve ball down low. If uh, Bissonette can work out of this jam, this is, that'd be Pretty good piece of work. Ball way outside, 2-0. Oh. We got the muscle waiting on deck. Eric Leonard. He's got to be 230. O'Connor calls time. He's granted time. He steps back in the batter's box. Umpire says play. That ball was down low, right at the knees. Bissonette gets the strike. Counts two and two. He's one strike away from putting away O'Connor, the number three hitter. And he hits that ball into center field on the screws. Runners tagging up. Cut off by Brendan Kelly. And the runner scores to tie the score. Tommy Impersoni saw that one all the way. He didn't make one step back, which would have been fatal. He came in on that ball that was sinking. And here comes Eric the Great. Eric the Great Leonard. Ball upstairs. The big per first baseman. I don't imagine he has a lot of speed. But Bissonette's got to check that runner at second base. He takes a look at him. There's a curveball for a strike. Aha. Leonard admired that breaking pitch. Counts even. I think Coach Simos would take a 3-3 tie. And there's a fly ball in the center field. Ambersoni is under it, makes the catch. The retire the side. The score after one and a half is 3-3. Three to three. We'll be back in a moment. Bottom of the second, Ryan Kester. Going to step in the box. He's hitting 286 on the year. He's playing some nice defense for Coach Simos. Really solidified that third base position. His sister's still a better ball player. He plays third base, third base wears the same number. He's playing down at uh, the uh, Turf softball field right now against the Dedham Marauders. There's a strike right down the middle. We we'll get Robbie Pagliuca. I didn't botch that this time. The parents would appreciate that. This ball outside, just outside. So Noski's not too happy with that. Pags is my favorite player. 
There's a curve ball up, up high that's fouled off to the right. Pagliuca. No A in there. Pagliuca. Except at the end. There's a fastball upstairs. Well, you heard that. Counts two and two. Bleachers almost filled up. And there's a swing and a miss for strike three. Ryan was uh, late on that one. So Robbie Pagliuca is going to pinch hit in the pitcher's spot, which would have been for Cole Glassburn. He'll probably go out and tow the rubber in the top of the third. Robbie Pags is a good contact hitter. Always seems to get the clutch hit. That's why he's my fave. He's down on the count, though, 0-1. It's, it's right up, foul ball way up in the air. The pitcher is going to call for it. Fights off the wind and makes the grab for the second out. We got our able-bodied cameraman, Bob Hamilton. I don't know whether he was able to track the flight of that ball. It was way up there. As a leadoff hitter, Ben McKenzie. Well, Bob just made an interesting observation that the uh, ball went up and it, in fact did come down. It's like the mystery of a black hole. It's uh, gravity. Curveball of Ben called strike. Counts even, one and one. Strike at the knees. I was watching a show on black holes the other night. It's a congressional hearing. I was trying to go to sleep. And it was these MIT astrophysicists that were talking about algorithms and data sets and time travel and all sorts of stuff. It's foul back. And I thought it would put me to sleep, but it was kind of riveting. Started watching at 2 o'clock. The next thing I know is 3.55. There's a curveball outside. So if you want to go to C-SPAN and look up black holes and watch what I watch, you're more than welcome to do it. There's a curveball, beaten foul. That's the closest ball that's come to the Rich Sisitsky Memorial broadcast perch all season. Actually, it's not Memorial broadcast perch. Uh, Rich built it. He's still alive and well. His son, Zach, who played on the ball club last year. And his foul back, fastball. One of the team captains is back from Georgetown. Spent the year there, really enjoyed himself. Except I'm a little disappointed. I haven't seen a lot of the alumni come down. There's a fastball upstairs. So let's see what Ben can do with count full and two down. There's a fly ball out to right center field. Ball's going, going, going. It's gonna be off the fence for a double. Roslanek looked like he had a bead on the ball. He just kept on going and going and drifting back and he gave up on the ball. Landed about three or four feet from the fence and McKenzie's on second base with a double. He'll take it. And here's our RBI guy, Stevie Simos. Takes a curve ball for a ball. Noski wants to know where that one was. Looked good from here, but Stevie didn't think so. That's all that matters. Steve Simos, Stevie. He's got that internal clock in his head, 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000. 
he's not afraid to just call time. There's a ball, scorched foul. Base hit, Ben McKenzie will score easily. Ball outside. If that had been, been doing their homework, and see that he's got a 515 average, they might have Noski pitch around Stevie. His brother Timmy playing Division I baseball at Army. Ball's outside. He's a starting second baseman. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Counts three balls and a strike. He's hitting 250, and uh, he's got a 982 fielding percentage. It's one of the top. There's a ground ball to first base. Leonard gobbles that one up, and that retires the side. At the end of two, it's three to three. The top of the third we go. New pitcher in for Hopkinton, Cam Jarrett. Coach Simos likes him very, very much. Got James Devonick going to step in to face Jarrett. The uh, Hiller boys did some uh, work over the weekend. They uh, painted the dugouts, Hiller green. All of them took them about two hours. It wasn't a one-man job. There's a ball upstairs. They painted. They painted the uh, broadcast perch up here and put some caps on the uh, posts. Make my job easier. There's a strike on the outside corner. Dedham's a good hitting team. So far, it's even Steven. Fans are still buzzing about that three run home run by. Here's a ground ball to third base, picked up and charged by Kester. Throws over to first for the out. Score that five to three. Kester to Kelly. One down. First time they've been able to get the leadoff hitter. Scott Noski, the catcher, going to face Jarrett, who drops down, drops a ball. Maybe Cole Glassburn's delivery is rubbing off on some of the other pitchers. It's a foul ball. Back to, uh, to, it's dropped. Wind pushed that one back towards home plate. Coach Simo said, don't go back to the fence on those balls. Hit foul behind the plate. The ball will come back to you. Just stand your ground. Good piece of advice. The balls always spin back. And there's a curveball on the outside corner. Ball going up behind the catch will always spin back towards home plate. And there's a line drive in the left, left field picked up by Rancatori. Gets the ball in. So with one down, Noski on first base. Jack Roslanik, the center fielder, steps in. He had a tough time with Ben McKenzie's ball hit out to dead center. I gave uh, Ben McKenzie a double on that. It was hit a long way, but Roslanik just misplayed it. It's a curveball in the outside corner for a ball. It was town election yesterday. There was a lot of buzz and there was a lot of rain too. So those poll workers really got drenched yesterday. A throw over to first, not in time. Noski a little bit lankier than his brother. Throw over, a little closer. Jared showing some quick feet.
Ball high. Got to throw a pitch in there for a strike. Doesn't want to fall behind 3-0. and but I got a feeling uh, Noski's got some designs on running. Ball outside. 3-0. Coach Simos has given the signal to try and hold on Noski a little bit. A throw over. Ball high. Walks him. Doesn't matter. Noski and Roslanik occupying the bases. Number eight hitter, the Hick. Petrantonio, it's a mouthful, a lot of, a lot of syllables there. Petrantonio. There's a curveball in there for a strike. Petrantonio didn't even uh, contemplate swinging at that pitch. Just inside. Sumpire has a very, very tight strike zone, but that's okay. One to nothing, Hopkinton over the Marauders down at the uh, turf field, the girls' softball game. Tom Nappy doing the broadcast down there with John Ritz. And there's a ground ball, third base foul. Ball and two strikes. Jarrett wheels to second. Just gets in in time. Noski was almost picked off. A beautiful inside move by Jarrett. Probably the best that's been thrown all year. Just spun around. The tag was put down, and Noski almost found himself hanging his head back to the dugout. There's a fly ball over to first base. It's foul territory. It stays foul for the second out of the inning. If Jared keeps the Marauders off the board, it'll be the first time the Hillers have not surrendered a run. The number nine hitter, Jared Dwayne. There's a curveball. That's a strike. Jared's not afraid to throw the, the yacker. They call him Dueno. Another curve ball in the dirt. Nicely blocked by Sheamus. Scores even now, three to three. On the top of the top of the third. There's a ground ball. Picked up. Kester's gonna tag the runner Noski to retire the side. The end of two and a half, it's 3-3. Three, three. We'll see in the bottom of the ha bottom half of the inning. Bottom of the third inning, 3-3. Three, three. Marauders versus Hillers. Very good crowd down here this afternoon. Nice, bright, sunny day. The wind has started to abate. Tommy Ambrosoni, and I haven't butchered his name once today. You gotta be proud of me. Stepping in, nobody on. Last time up, he put down a, probably the best bunt I've seen all year. 
Hits the first pitch. That's going to be caught up in the sun. Shortstop backs up for it, fights off the wind and makes the catch. The play looked a little easier than it really was. The shortstop had to fight both the sun and the wind. Here's Babe Ruth. He hit a monstrous home run his last time up. Ball upstairs. Noski's throwing. Pretty hard still. Hasn't lost any of his zip. It's going to be a strike. One on one. That's what I said. One on one. Ball outside. I didn't think um, Drew Rancatori's ball last last time up was going to get out, but it just carried, carried. Ball's outside. And it carried right out of the ballpark. Right fielder playing him deep. Center fielder straight up. Left fielder shading over towards center. Curve ball. That's a ball. and. Drew Rancatori will take a walk. So with one out, Connor Kelly is going to step in. Rancatori is second on the team in steals with 11, which was really surprising based on uh, watching him last summer down at uh, American Legion post-77. Didn't run much at all. Here's the ball low. So we'll see what Dedham has in its books on Rankatori, where the Noski's going to throw over. Oh, oh, that first baseman's footwork is just dismal. There's a strike. The first baseman's feet are pointing right towards second base. And if the ball goes up the first base towards the home plate side of first base, he will never unlock his hip. There's a foul straight back. He should have his toe pointed, not directly at the pitcher, but a little bit closer, pointed closer to home. So if the ball is up the home plate side, he can get his leg out and get his glove to it. And it's a swing and strike. Two down. Ronnie Sheamus stepping in. The number six hitter today. To back pick. Throw down to second base. And he doesn't, doesn't get the tag down and hold on to the ball. So Drew Rancatori has got his 12th swipe of the year. Ball was in time but high. Shortstop caught it, tried to put the tag on the shoulder, and originally the umpire was going to call him out and saw the ball squared out of the glove and called him safe. Good call by the infield base umpire. There's a curve ball for a strike. Good arm by Noski behind the plate to get the speedy Rankatori. Oh, ball up high. That may be trouble out there. And the shortstop, again, fighting the wind off. Gets it for the third out. We're heading to the top of the fourth. HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fourth inning. Got a pitching change. That's something new. Ethan DeYoung replaces Jarrett. Did a real nice job. It's one to nothing down at the lower field. The girls have 
Kept Dedham really, really close. Charlotte Can has struck out eight Dedham Marauders there. I don't have much of a book on DeYoung. We do have the uh, number one, two, and three hitters for Dedham who've been in trouble most of the afternoon. First pitch from DeYoung is down, low. Dedham players haven't been able to get a good read on any of the pitchers, any of their tendencies. It's a foul straight back. So nice to have this netting behind home plate rather than that clanky metal backstop. Did some renovations last year on a volunteer basis, dedicated to Tom McIntyre, Hopkins in residence. There's a ball called strike. We get three pitchers now that will drop down to the side. Maybe it's the in thing. And there's a foul ball. Ethan DeYoung's brother was down here earlier. Said his how do you do's. Was locked out of the house. Needed the key. Haven't seen him return. Ball low to Noski. Counts even. Scores even, 3-3. Three, three. There's a foul ball off to the left. Temperature has not dropped a bit. It's still 67 degrees. I forgot my sunscreen. What else is new? There's a foul ball off to the left. Right down the bullpen area. Noski was way up in front of that pitch. Ball way outside, way outside. Noski led off the game with a single, a sizzling single between first and second. And there's a line drive in the left field for a single. Coach Simos is going to visit. The young, perhaps it was uh, some confusion on some signals. That's Coach Simos's first visit of the day. Unlimited visits in high school ball. Well, maybe that's what it was. Just a miscommunication. The young hasn't had that many innings this year. So, Coach Simons might want to put a play on first base and have the young throw over there. There's a ball low, it gets away from Seamus, and Noski gets second, makes a turn there. So, whatever the thoughts they had about maybe putting the pickoff play on is now gone. I'm sorry, that's Casey down at second base. Sean Noski's up, pitcher. My bad. That ball's hitting the air over to the shortstop area. McKenzie over and makes the grab. Showed a little white there. A little snow cone. Coach Zymos waving his hands. He's not happy about something. 
Maybe somebody missed the defensive assignment. Perhaps Ethan DeYoung wasn't backing up third base just in case that ball dropped. He was out around the mound area. Coach Simos is big on fundamentals. He doesn't like to have a base left open or abandoned, for lack of a better word. So O'Connor hit the ball hard earlier in the game. DeYoung gets that call on the outside corner. If he can work the corners, he's going to be fine. Anything over the fat part of the plate is going to be trouble. DeYoung needs a hold here. And there's a pop-up over towards second base. In comes Connor Kelly, who ball pops in and out of his glove. You could hear the uh, oohs and ahs from the crowd. Don't see that often. <laughs> so Paharic went out there, and he gave up on the ball. Connor Kelly the, came in, camped under it. Ball went in his glove, went out of his glove, and back into his glove. It's a ground ball foul. Coach Simos picks up the ball, gives it back to the umpire. It's a nice gesture of sportsmanship. <laughs> Eric the Great is up, big first baseman. Ball in. So far, Coach Simos' plan of throwing a new pitcher every inning is working out just fine. There's a strike. I was just going to ask for the count, but the camera probably picked that up. One ball, two strikes to Eric the Great Leonard. This should be strike three. No. I wanted that one. I wanted that one. He should be head back to the dugout. That was a strike if I ever saw one. That's foul back. Runner was off. A little risky sending that runner from second to third. If it was a ball, Seamus has a play at third base. Young shows off his inside move, not even close. But that was called by Coach Simos because he saw the runner take off on the previous pitch. Jack Breslin taking a, a run on the track. He may be in next inning. And there's a line drive in the left field. That ball's going to get down. And in comes a run for Dedham. Billy Casey scores after a single from Eric Leonard. Coach so scores 4 3. Top of the fourth, James Devonick up. I don't think uh, Eric the Great will be stealing. He's got a greedy lead over there for a big kid. Nice stop by Seamus. I'd pick over there just for the heck of it because that lead one, two, two and a half steps Swing and a miss. One, two. Almost a three-step lead over there. And there's a fly ball in the right field. That's going back. Kelly back to the fence. Leonard rounding second in the third. 
The wind played with that one. Didn't look like it was going to go as far as it did. Well, Kelly just couldn't keep, catch up to it. Scott Noski now is two runners in scoring position. They may have the young kind of pitch around Noski and wait till they get deeper in the batting order. The force play with first base open. The ball outside. I don't even know whether a wild pitch or a pass ball would score Leonard from third base. Oh, Coach, Coach Simos alerting his infield. Battery. There's an open base over there. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. The young wants to limit the damage if he can. Good battle going, good battle. There's a foul ball off to the right. That's out of play. There was a track meet over there today. Might go off somebody's head. There's a line drive in the left field. That's going to play two. Noski's got a two run single. So now the score is six to three. Bases are cleared. Jack Waslanik in the box. Coach Simos telling Ronnie Sheamus to uh, throw Noski out if he takes off. There's a fly ball in the right field. In comes Kelly, and he makes the catch. No bobble there. So at the end of uh, three and a half inning, it's 6 3, Dedham. Bottom of the fourth inning, 6 to 3, Dedham. Just as a reminder, HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizza, Kitchen and Grill. Located at 14 Main Street in downtown Hopkinton. Of course, you can find them online at mybillspizza.com. Stepping in to hit for the Hillers is Brendan Kelly. He's heading off to Stonehill College to play some baseball next year. And there's a fly ball off to the left side. That won't be caught. Good chase by the shortstop and the... That ball dropped in. That ball dropped in. Kelly got thrown to second base. I thought that had no shot of staying fair. Good hustle by the shortstop on the left fielder, but they got Kelly trying to grab two bases. That was an excellent defensive play that our camera did not catch. Ryan Kester set to hit. Takes the strike. I didn't think there was a chance in heck that that ball would stay in play. Those got to give the Dedham fielders credit for not giving up on it. And then it's ball outside. Some groans from the crowd. Did look good. There's a 58-foot curve ball in the dirt. Noski's pitched a pretty good game so far. Held the powerful hitters, Hitler's hitters to just three runs. Uh, 
There's a fly ball down the right field line. That's going to stay fair. And Kessler's not going to try for two. Being down three runs. It's Bobby McGuire. Got a pinch hit. McGuire hasn't seen much time. Takes a fastball up high. That ball's going to go out to right field, and it's going to stay in. Wind is definitely pushing the ball out towards the fence. There's two out. Leadoff hitter, Ben McKenzie. I'm going to step in. I know that Coach Simos is going to send Ryan Kester to get him into scoring position with McKenzie up. There's a curveball for a strike. Good time to throw it. Threw a first pitch curve the last time Ben was up. There's a fly ball in the left center field. It's a can of corn. Out goes McKenzie, and we'll go to the top of the fifth inning on H cam. Another pitching replacement, Pat Breton, in for Ethan DeYoung. Pat Breton making varsity this year. Bottom half of Dedham's order. Hick Pietrad, uh, let's try this again. Hick Petritonio, the fastball over for a strike. So P. Trantonio finds himself behind in the count. 0 2. Breton's got a little life on his fastball. Coach Simo sends in the signals to Seamus. There's a curveball spoiled off by the Hick. Trentonio. I'm just going to call him the Hick from here on in. Heck with it. I don't get paid enough money. There's a curveball upstairs. Counts one and two. Down the softball field, heading to the bottom of the fifth, it's 3 1, Dedham. There's a curveball way upstairs. Didn't get a good grip on that. Tom Nappy doing duty down at the turf field. See what Breton does here with two and two count. Throws a fastball, it's fouled straight back. Hick was late on that one. Late on that one, fouled back. Count still two and two. Jared Dwayne waiting on deck. That's strike three. Sit down. Take a seat. Ride some pine. 
Some nice southern yellow pine in that dugout. Freshly painted. That was a nice pitch sequence by Breton. He's facing the number nine hitter with Billy Casey waiting on deck. 6-3 Dedham. There's a strike. 1-1. One -on -one. Ball outside. Ball high. Counts three and one. So Dwayne or Casey made that. Had to be an unbelievable defensive play last inning, getting Brendan Kelly trying to stretch a single to a double on a ball I thought nobody was going to get. It was a foul ball out of play. Even our official scorer doesn't know who made that play because he was blocked out. Scoring today, giving me a hand, is uh, John Fisher, Josh Fisher's dad who pitched in yesterday's game against Medfield. There's a ball outside. And Dwayne takes a walk. So here's Casey, he's two for three on the day. Doing some damage. Ball outside. One thing the pitcher's got to do is not change his tempo once he's got to run a run. If he tries to rush it up there, it's messing with his mechanics. It's foul tip. Off the glove of Seamus. Now that's what you have a tendency to do at the high school level is Quicken up things, because you got to run around base. There's tenths of a second difference. There's a curveball. That's a nice pitch for a strike. It'd be a coup if he can keep Casey off the bases. Sean Noski on duck. There's a throw over. Dwayne back in safely. There's the ground ball slowly hit the third base. Kester picks it up, throws the first. Not in time. Casey's got another hit. He had earned that one. Slow roller. The Kester really didn't have much of a chance. Oh, Sean Noski, the pitcher, stepping in. Pat Breton stepping off the back of the rubber. Wants to make sure he's got his signals right. Comes to the set, delivers, curve ball. Ump says low. Mm. Ball in tight. Noski's ahead in the count. He can help himself out here with a Base hit. Yeah. 
Dwayne on second. Casey on first. There's a strike there, right down Broadway. Bretton backs off the rubber. Wants the signs again. He's going to call Seamus out to make sure they're both on the same page as to what they want to throw. That's the third time they've tried to get a runner at uh, second base. The first time was the closest. The real close play earlier in the game, and the other two haven't been close. They work on that in practice. There's a curveball. Umpire's not buying. Counts three and one with O'Connor waiting on deck. Breton like to retire Noski here. It's not going to. There's a walk. Loads the bases. That kind of drives Coach Simos a little crazy, giving away free passes. So it's mano a mano here. Their number three hitter against Breton. He's going to pitch out of the full wind up. There's a strike. Nice break and pitch. Good call, Coach Simos. O'Connor was sitting on a fastball the whole time. Will Coach Simos double up with another curveball? No. Fastball follows right back. He's up. Up 0-2. It's another trip to the mound by Seamus. Not sure what that's all about. Oh, he's up on the count, 0-2. If he can get rid of O'Connor, that'd be a coup. Coup d'etat, curveball, foul back. Just got a piece of that one. He's up on him, 0-2, he doesn't have to throw him anything good. Umpire's gonna do a little housekeeping there. Stump is a pro. One of the better umpires you've seen. Nothing down the middle. Nice block by Seamus. O'Connor wasn't biting. He's still got another pitch to waste. Coach Simos is asking Seamus to block the ball, so maybe he does have a breaking pitch on the way. There's a fly ball into short right field. Are they going to call an infield fly? No. They said that would have been extraordinary effort. Score down the lower field is 3-2 Dedham. Is uh, Eric Leonard. Oh, we got two down. 
top of the fifth inning. Cleanup hitter Eric Leonard, Eric Leonard facing Breton. Ball a little low outside. There's a curve ball in there. <laughs> totally froze Leonard at the plate. Bat looks like a toothpick in his hands. There's a curve ball, foul back. Just got a piece of that, he finds himself in the hole. One and two. Some ball shaggers going by. Just gas them. Throw the throw the hose at them. Another curveball. Just spoiled it off. If Cole Glassburn were on the mound, if I were to read his mind, he would quick pitch him. But he's the only one that does that. Ball again, down the dirt again. Coach Simos always thinking, thinking, thinking. Bases are loaded. He's got to throw a strike somewhere. Just not down the fat part of the plate. Almost had Leonard going. Seamus wants to appeal to the base umpire. Wasn't even close. Brett just reared back and fired that one. Bretton desperately doesn't want to give in to Leonard. Had him down 0-2. Runners in motion. And there's a fly ball into left center field. And Brosoni back, and that's going to be off the wall. Runners are taking off. On the pitch, and they score three. It's now 9-3, Dedham. Coach Simos is going to take a trip out to the mound. That was a tough break. Curveball, curveball, curveball. Finally threw something to Leonard, and he showed off his pop. Hit the ball to the wall. And now he's going to get pinch run for because they only made it to first base on a ball that went to the wall. And they're going to have a pitching change. Jack Breslin in for Pat Breton. So we'll return to action as soon as his warm ups are done. We've got a pitching change. Jack Breslin in for Pat Breton. Tough luck. Was up on Eric Leonard 0 2. Leonard fought his way back. Got the count to full count. A few breaking pitches he spoiled off and finally hit a bomb in the left center field that went up against the fence. Runners were off on the pitch that, as you can see, there's a pinch runner for Leonard, who I think weighs 240. He only made it to first base on a triple, well, on a three RBI hit. I don't think I've ever seen that. But anyway, back to action. James Devonick, the number five hitter, throw over by Breslin, not in time. Curveball way outside. Coach Simos went to this one inning per pitcher because he's got a lot of games coming up. There's a strike on the outside corner by Breslin.
It's a fastball. Just waved at by Devonick. He just casted his bat out there like it was a fishing rod. Breslin steps off the back of the rubber. There's a fly ball in the center field, and that will retire the side. Nine to three, Dedham, head to the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth inning, we'll see Stevie Simos, Tommy Ambersoni, and Drew Rancatori. Noski throws down to second base. They'll face Noski, Sean Noski, who's pitching a damn good game. Gave up that home run to Rancatori and pretty much it's been quiet the rest of the afternoon. Stevie Simo sizzled the ball down to first base, his last at bat. Oh, was scooped up by Eric Leonard, and it was a little foot race to the bag. Pop up on the first pitch, shortstop, going back on it. That's going to drop. The wind just took control of that ball, and that easy can of corn pop up drops in for a signal. So let's see if the Hillers can make hay with Mother Nature here. Wind now blowing straight in the batter's face. Down low. Over the plate below. Coach Simos always wants it to be a battle. Batter, pitcher. Compete. There's the ground ball. That's going to be picked up. Thrown the first to a race, Ambersoni. Stevie Simons had to get away of that and give the fielder the opportunity to get it, or that would have been runner's interference. Final score, the girls' softball game was three to two. Dead of marching in and taking that game. Down low to Rancatori. Stevie Simos in scoring position, Connor Kelly on deck. There's a ground ball, a little tapper over to its first. Pitcher grabs it, Noski over to Leonard for the second out of the inning. Connor Kelly, who struck out a couple times today, is due for a base hit. Got Stevie Simos 90 feet away. Curve ball on first pitch. Kelly lets that one go. It's almost dinner time as I give the cameraman a little wink. And there's a fly ball in the center field. And that's going to be caught right at the fence. So the score at the end of five is 9-3 Dedham on H game. Top of the six. Dedham ahead, 9-3. Just having a conversation with Brian Kelly, Brendan Kelly's dad. Came over to... Show is discussed. Of course, team should never lose a game, in his mind. Commiserating with John Fisher, who feels the same way. Two peas in a pod. We got Mr. Noski, catcher. That would be Scott Noski. And Breslin pitches, gets an out. 
But Harrick gets that. A little bloody line drive. Jack Roslanek, the center fielder. Part of the J crew. There's a fastball down low. The athletic director pulls up at her little John Deere supercharged vehicle. It's going to be a base hit to center. Drops down, picked up by Tom, Tommy Ambersoni. Oh, I haven't butchered that once today. Here's the hick, see if he can do damage. They're gonna have a pinch runner. Pinch runner for Roslanik. Roslanik will go back in on the re-entry rule. President steps off the rubber briefly. Throws over and not in time. Pete Antonio, say that three times fast. There's a little curveball. Kelly in for it. Puts that away. Two out. Doug Onzi, the class of uh, 2017. He's watched his sister play down at the softball field. Former Ashley and Post 77 play, a throw over by Breslin, not in time. It's at the University of Michigan. Jared Dwayne facing Breslin, pops that one sky high. Brendan Kelly camped under it, makes the grab, retires the side. So at the end of five and a half innings, it's nine to three Denham on H cam. Bottom of the six, Ronnie Seamus, Brendan Kelly waiting on deck. Nine three Denham. Denham girls retired the uh, Hiller girls, three to two. Tom Nappy will have to do a lacrosse game after that. Double duty today. There's a ground ball beaten down the third baseline. Noski's going to just eat it. No, umpire calls foul. Tom Nappy informed me he's running out of batteries, so he won't be up to visit for those who care. Seamus going to walk that off a little bit. Not fun having a ball hit off your foot. There's a strike. Ooh. I shouldn't anticipate. It looked like a strike all the way. One and one. And there's a line drive in the left field. That ball gets down. A leadoff hit by Ronnie Seamus. Brenda Kelly, BK, as he's affectionately known. Three sports star. Football, basketball. Baseball, of course. There's a ball outside. Tyler Doherty on deck. He's going to do some pinch hitting. Counts even now. Wasn't even close to being BK's pitch. Tried to saw him off. Noski did. Curveball. Umpire took his time calling that one. Two and one.
Brendan always a threat to go yard. And that ball's hit deep in the center field. Roslana going back, and he just makes the grab. That ball was hit deep in the center field. That's uh, 10 feet more than that ball would have been in the parking lot. So with... Tyler Doherty doesn't have much of a chance at the dish. Oh, ball upstairs in tight. Well, Tyler Doherty's hitting for Ryan Kester. And Kester will go back into the game on the re entry rule. Way late. Way late. I don't know, I got a strange feeling. We're gonna have a foul ball over here. Oh, the ball is right by Doherty. Jack Breslin on deck. Strike three. Jack Breslin stepping in. Did a nice job his last inning. Squares that ball up, hit deep in the center field. Rosanic back paddling, and that's gonna be gone. Oh now, here we go. Is it a ground rule double or a home run? Call ground rule double. Well, he thought it was a home run. He'll go to sleep tonight saying that's a home run, but the umpire says ground rule double. And that's gonna return Seamus to third base, as he was on first base to start. So we'll have a little Noski Noski conversation. The Polish connection. Scott Noski and Sean Noski. I think they're brothers. Ben McKenzie's got a chance to get it just a little bit closer. Two runners in scoring position. Breslin got a good lead with two outs. Curveball. That's the third straight time he started him off with a curveball. Nine three Dedham. Bottom of the sixth. Another curveball. It's a take by McKenzie. First base is open. Dedham coach wanted to know where that pitch was. Umpire indicated it was up high. There's the strike on the outside corner. No question about that. There's a white SUV out in left field that Ben has got his eyes on. That's it. Out to left center field, and that ball is gone. Out of the yard, in the parking lot for a three-run jack. Ben McKenzie. That's three to the board. It's nine to six. That was a no doubt about her. That's the way he hits him for his fourth home run of the year. See what the uh, Denim coach decides to do, if anything, to have a conversation with Noski, but that ball was ripped. And the wind didn't help that at all. That was all muscle. Stevie Simo steps in. Oh, scalded foul. Way out front of that pitch. 
Stevie Simos with three home runs on the year. <laughs> Stevie Simos hitting over 500. Foul tip in the Minnanoski. He's down 0-2. Got a lawnmower behind us, gonna go down and mow the uh, turf field. I jest. Curveball outside. One and two. Right fielder's playing so far out. Foul at the feet of the catcher. I think the right fielder might take two steps back and be at the fence. There's a gap in right center that is huge. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that defensive alignment. Shading Stevie Simos to left center, the center fielder, and the right fielder has got him dead pole. Ground ball to th first base. Leonard picks it up, flips Anoski, almost a collision, but they get Stevie Simons out for the second time in a row. So at the end of six innings, it's nine to six, Dedham. Top of the seventh inning, we got another pitching change. Alex Barker Hook in here to pitch the seventh. HCAM Sports is supported by viewers and Bill's. Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street, center of Hopkinton. You can find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the lineup, Billy Casey, Sean Noski, Griffin O'Connor for Dedham. Barker Hook's job is just to keep them where they're at with their nine runs. See if uh, his teammates can make some hay in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sean Noski's been very stingy, except for that big bomb hit by Ben McKenzie. Actually, two bombs. Rankatori McKenzie touched Noski up, but he's pitched a very good game. Barker Hook fires a strike in there. Like to see him get ahead of the hitter. Well, the Hillers haven't given up too many free passes today. Just Dedham's been doing some good hitting. Ball inside, the umpire says. 1-1. Barker Hook, big, tall, lanky. Right-hander. There's a bunt. Popped right up by home plate. Caught by Ronnie Sheamus. Interesting call having your leadoff hitter being up three runs bunt. But I'm not the manager. All I do is talk about it. So, Sean Noski stepping in to face Barker Hook. Hook to the set, pitching out of the stretch, backs off the mound. I like all pitchers at this age to pitch from the stretch, but that's my own opinion. Unless things mechanically can go wrong. And there's a strike. Two first pitch strikes for Barker Hook first two hitters he's faced. He's got Gorilla Monsoon on deck and Haystack Calhoun on double deck. This is a ball outside. Like to stay away from Gorilla Monsoon. For those of you who don't know who they are, they were professional wrestlers. You'll have to Google them. Ball low. Two and one. Oh, 
There's a fall ball out of play. For those of you watching, today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2019. Had a rain out yesterday. They did get in two and a half innings. Medfield came to town. Big thunderstorms came rolling in. That game will be restarted and be played in its entirety. Hopkins and Had in the bottom of the third, bases loaded with no outs. Some thought they would revert back and pick up the game where they left up, but no, the game's going to be replayed. There's a swing and a miss by Noski. He goes down. Swinging, at least. Griffin O'Connor stepping in. Barker Hook would like to make this a clean inning. Hillers can get in and out. Figure out what they got to do to scratch three runs across in the bottom of the seventh. Ball up high, the umpire says. Dedham girls watching their male counterparts. I haven't seen the Hopkins girls come up. Tough loss for them. There's a strike. One on one. Alex Parker Hook showing he's got some good stuff. Everybody will be well rested, only going an inning for the next game. There's a fly ball in the right field. That's caught by Paharik. A one, two, three inning for the Hillers. So at the end of six and a half innings, it's nine, six, Dedham on H game. Bottom of the seventh inning, Hopkins' last chance to tie or win this game. Coach Simo said, any way you can get on base, do it. That was his message. Any way you can get a base, do it. Tommy Ambersoni hitting 400, coming into the game. Laid down a beautiful bunt in the first inning. Was thrown out. And he takes a strike. Sean Noski still bringing it. And he's going the full seven, and there's no warm-up activity in the bullpen. Oh, Denham manager's got his confidence. The ground ball over to Leonard. He picks it up. Waddles over to first base. Hopkins it down to its last two outs. Drew Rancatori, one of home run fame today, takes a curve ball for a strike. I'm sure the Herald will have a nice write up about Sean Noski today, tonight, whenever they publish. There's a curve ball. Rancatori lays off that one. Some fair weather fans are leaving uh, the pavilion. There's a ball in the dirt. Oh, that was close, Bob. That was close. Bob Hamilton put his mitt out there thinking the ball might come up close to us, but so far this year we've been lucky. We've been lucky we haven't got beaned. And there's a ball taken high. Three and one. Noski reached back for a little extra on that. And the ball is thrown right down the middle with some purpose, with some oomph. Counts full. Connor Kelly on deck. Drew Rancatori just got to get on. And there's a fly ball in the right center field. That ball is down. Rancatori is going to grab three bases, no two bases. The ball went through the fence. Another ground rule double with one out. Yeah, 
If that was a regular fence, athletic director, hint, hint, if that was a regular fence, that would have been a three-bagger. Instead, it went under it. Head tint. Center field has got to be talking to himself. Gee, and they, they're hitting the balls out at me, and I'm getting close to this rubberized fence. Roslanik must be talking to himself. There's a base hit. That's going to get down. Rancatori is going to turn third, and he's going to be held up by Brent McKenzie. Ronnie Sheamus stepping in. Now there's two men on, one man out. Little rally going. Rally caps in the dugout. Noski looking over the dugout. Dedham coach positioning his outfielders. The wind is starting to pick up and blowing out towards center field. Sheamus is going to work every pitch, not be too over anxious. Get the count his way. Ball poured over for a strike. Brendan Kelly on deck. He can swat one out and tie this game. They got to send the runner here. Pick off over. Back easy. Three shuffle lead by Kelly. Sheamus is going to take a ball high, just high. Dedham coach is looking down on the ground saying, where was that pitch? And he's, he's talking to himself over there. He wanted that call, but bottom of the seventh inning, the umpire's calling them straight up. And there's a strike. Breaking pitch. Sheamus can, Sheamus can uh, take a pitch high, adds a base hit, will score a run, bring him within two runs. Will they send Connor Kelly on this pitch? Hit a mile high out in the right field. Brancatori's going to tag, and he will, and he'll score the seventh run of the game. Sacrifice fly for Sheamus. Two down now for Brendan Kelly. He hit a long fly his last time up. But it was caught. Didn't get out. He's got the wind at his back now. I'd be happy to see him bounce one out of here. Ball low. Good take by Brendan Kelly, good take. He looked that ball right into the mitt. Nice line drive will do, speed on the bases. Thought about it, took a strike. Coach Simos is saying to Brendan, gotta be in your zone, don't go after anything you don't like. Ball low. Working the count. Two and one. Ryan Kester on deck. Ball beaten off his foot. Foul. He's down to his last strike. The Hillers are down to their last strike. I got a feeling Noski's going to reach back with everything he has and try and gas him. He puts a little extra giddy up on his pitches. Leonard playing behind runner. Oh, up high. Brendan saw that all the way. And that's just what he did. He reared back and threw it with everything he had. Ooh. 
Will he drop in a bender here? We go with straight heat. Bender. That's going to be bounced up to Leonard. He runs to the bag, retires aside. Dedham is victorious. Nine to seven. Good battle put on by these two clubs. So the final score is nine to seven Dedham. We'll see you folks next time. Have a great night. Thank you.